What's up guys, Asian here again with another, uh, I would call this a build video, although it's not necessarily going to be uh, about a specific build, um, but this video is going to be answering the question as to whether or not a sword and board is possible to do good DPS. Um, so basically whether you you can, instead of doing dual wield bow, you can do something like sword and shield and bow and still pull competitive DPS. Um, so I actually did a few tests on two different classes um, just because the question at hand came from a forum post where somebody basically asked, hey, is it possible to even do like decent DPS uh, using a sword and board as your front bar uh, compared to like dual wield or even a, a two-hander? So uh, naturally, the, the question comes as uh, what... What are you really talking about when you're talking about sword and board DPS? Um, there's there's basically two forms of uh, thinking that you can kind of go with this. The first one is, uh, you know, you have a class spamble. So a classic example would be the Nightblade with Surprise Attack. Uh, surprise Attack is the class spamble for Nightblades. Um, so a sword and board, you really aren't really changing too much. The only thing you're losing is going to be rending slashes, which is a pretty strong dot. Um, so obviously you're going to be losing some DPS there. You're losing some DPS from losing a second weapon enchant. Um, but you're really only changing one skill in your setup, uh, in your bar setup that way. Um, so is that really what you mean when you say sword and board DPS? Basically you're just swapping out rending slashes for something like Baroque Slash or something for the minor heroism or something like that? Or are you talking more about actually using a sword and board skill, active skill, as your spamble instead? If that is the case, then there really aren't that many classes that are going to fit that sort of mindset. The only class that I can think of is actually the Stam Sork, which is what I'm on right now. Um, the Stam Sork is uh, one of two classes uh, that can use a, a class, uh, not non-class spamble. So Stam DKs and Stam Sorks are the two classes in the game that do not have a class spamble. Arguably, you can use Venomous Claws as a Stam DK spamble, um, but you can also use Crushing Weapon or even Shrouded Daggers on a Stam DK. Um, but Stam Sorks don't have a class spamble at all, so they don't even have, like, you can't use Hurricane as a spamble, for instance. So traditionally, Stam Sorks have used uh, either Crushing Weapon or Shrouded Dagger as their spamble. So this is kind of the classic example that I think um, uh, I think that was kind of going on in people's minds uh, when they asked that question um, is actually using an active ability uh, on the sword and board skill line instead of a class spamble instead because everyone knows class spambles are generally going to be stronger uh, overall as a as a spamble ability so I basically did two different comparisons uh, I did one on a nightblade and then one on a stam sword the builds were pretty much identical with the exception of the monster helm on the stam sword now uh, both builds basically use Reliquin onto the body and Advanced Okada as the, your front bar set. Um, now the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that shields do not count as weapons, they count as armor. So you, your options for uh, shields in terms of enchants are going to be a little bit tricky. So you're pretty much uh, stuck with either Infused or Divines. Uh, so if we go over to the uh, Transmute Station here, I'm just going to run over real quick. And try to transmute my shield. So if we try to transmute our shield here, all the way down here, you can see that uh, we have divines as, as an option. Uh, as you can go with infused or divines. I just went with infused because because I like the additional stem. Uh, but you can even go with divines. It actually helps out a little bit because you do need a little bit of additional penetration this way. We'll just go with divine instead of infused here. So that's one of the main things that you're going to have to kind of keep in mind is that uh, you don't get any additional weapon enchant, you only get an armor enchant. So in this case, you have to go with this max stam enchant, it's probably the best option here. Then again, divines or infused, divines is going to be a little bit better this way. Uh, so now you have eight divines, so you have a little bit more out of your lover enchant here. So with lover now, you're sitting at 4403 compared to 4196. So a little bit more penetration, uh, not too much. You're only sitting at me like about a little over 200 additional penetration, which uh, it really isn't all that much. You're talking maybe less than half a percent increase in deep guess. Um, but it does help out a little bit. You can move a couple points out of piercing if you want, like one or two points out of piercing. Um, so that's one of the differences between like a dual wield build uh, compared to like a sword and board build. The other thing too is uh, on your stamina night blade because stamina night blades have better sustain overall. Uh, you're able to use Veladress and still be able to sustain pretty decently well. On a stam sword, our sustain is significantly worse, so you will need to use storm fist in order to sustain. Uh, mainly because our main spamble here, if we want to compare spambles, 
I am using Heroic Slash as a spamble just because it's a little bit cheaper than Power Slam. Power Slam is your other option as a spamble. It's going to do a little bit more damage, but it does also cost more. But ultimately, either of them are fine. But Heroic Slash is going to be a little bit more useful because of that minor heroism. You'll be able to get out your ultimate a little bit more frequently that way. So that's a little bit more of a DPS gain this way. DPS difference between them, like I said, is pretty minimal at uh, at, at best. Um, so that's the option there. But if you take a look at the cost, it's 2109 for Heroic Slash. And versus uh, if we were going to be using Shrouded Daggers instead... We're looking at, uh, I should probably, now it's hard to kind of tell just because we don't have the uh, reduced cost, but our cost is actually, would actually go down by 15% or so, uh, so we would actually be sitting at around 2,000 or so, so if I can just grab a sword here to dual wield, our cost goes down to 1961, so our cost for Shrouded Daggers is a little bit cheaper. Now Lyco also has a build that uses Rending Slashes as a spamble, and Rending Slashes is a very cheap spamble, it's 1426 stamina. So already you can see that we are losing a little bit in terms of sustain, we are uh, do need a little bit of help with sustain, and so that's where the um, Storm Fist comes in. Storm Fist does have very nice synergy with the Stam Sword, plus we have additional regen as our one piece bonus here. Um, in terms of weapon enchants, uh, you're just still going to go with double infuse. Now, in terms of your main hand, you can go sword, axe, dagger, mace. Doesn't really matter because if you have a sword and board, uh, you don't get any of the additional bonuses that you would normally get uh, with your dual wield passive. So, in order to forget to get that additional uh, crit chance on a dagger, you need to have dagger and another weapon on your offhand, not a shield. So, in this instance, we would not be getting any sort of bonuses, regardless of weapon type. So, you can really choose whichever weapon type you would like. Uh, then we're going weapon damage and poison damage instead. Now if you want to use Veladress instead of Storm Fist, you will have to swap this out for an Absorb Stamina Enchant because you won't be able to sustain a full light attack rotation unless you have that Absorb Stamina Enchant. So uh, it's kind of up to you. Um, again, DPS difference between the two is pretty minimal, around 1, 1.5% 1 uh, at most. Um, but that's kind of what I uh, managed to get out of this. Now I will kind of show you guys what I'm... Uh, oh, the other big thing with Stam Sork is that uh, if you're going Sword and Board instead of Dual Wield, you actually... Bloodthirsty is actually going to lose out compared to Infused because with Dual Wield, uh, with Rending Slashes and Shroud Dagger as a spam, but we actually get a little bit of an additional bonus uh, when we get under 25% health. We have 20% additional damage uh, with our Dual Wield abilities. We don't have the same sort of passive under one hand and shield. All of them are pretty much all defensively based. Um, the only one that's kind of DPS based would be Deadly Bash, but we're not using our bash attacks uh, as a spamble because that just doesn't make much sense. Um, so uh, we do have a little bit of additional uh, kind of execute damage going in with for dual wielding, which helps push Bloodthirsty a little bit ahead of Infused. Um, but because we don't have any additional execute damage outside of Implosion, Infused actually ends up pushing ahead of Bloodthirsty in my test. It's not that much DPS increase. You're talking, again, probably like a, around 1%, 2% increase in DPS. But if you're trying to min-max this build um, for whatever reason, you're going to want to go Infuse instead of uh, Bloodthirsty on your jewelry because you don't have an Execute uh, ability at all. Um, so you will definitely need to use Dubious Kamor and Thorn in an Artem Thakeway Broth with this build. That's pretty much a given because you, again, with the Heroic Slash, costing more uh, compared to Shrouded Daggers and Rending Slashes, uh, you do need that additional sustain in order to kind of really help out. Um, so that's uh, kind of one downside here. Now one upside of running a Sword and Board is that because none of the Sword and Board abilities have a dot, you do open up one ability slot on the front bar, so we're able to use uh, Rearming Trap on our front bar here. Now, rather than go into all this build uh, information, let's just go over kind of the DPS results that I managed to get here. So, I did save uh, one from our Nightblade. So this is what I got from our Nightblade. Uh, so this is the Nightblade with Sword and Board on our front bar here. So we don't have dual wield, so I don't have a dual wield parse, but you can check out my previous video to kind of see dual wield parses. Uh, the best night Stam Nightblades in the game right now for solo parses are pulling around 55-56k. I'm pulling closer to about 52-53k because I'm obviously not the best player in the games or among the best players in the game. Um, so you can already tell that we are seeing a drop in DPS. Uh, so we're sitting at 47.5k DPS, which is about a 4 to 5k drop in DPS compared to a dual wield build. So that's basically uh, taking into consideration the loss of an additional weapon, uh, enchant, the loss of our wind blade and blunt passes, we're losing 10% weapon crit this way, the loss of um, additional weapon damage because shields don't give us any weapon damage versus uh, dual wielding does. 
Um, so that's where most of the losses are coming into play. And then the loss of a dot through rending slashes. Um, so this is pretty much kind of what you would expect to see from a Nightblade. Obviously a pretty substantial DPS loss. Um, but this class spam will still keeps us pretty much afloat for a pretty decent, um, decent amount. But it is a pretty substantial DPS loss. Now if we take a look at what I managed to pull with a sword and board instead. So for sword and board, this is what I, these are the parses that I managed to get. So this one was with infuse, so we got 39.1k. And then this parse was with bloodthirsty, so 38.5k. This was with heroic slash as our spam will here. So you can see here we did a lot of heroic slashing going on uh, over here. Um, so this basically gives us 100% uptime on minor heroism, uh, which basically gives us one point. Uh, basically, it's an increase of about uh, a third of an ultimate point every second or so. So it's 1.5. Uh, uh, it's one ultimate every 1.5 seconds. So if you do the math, uh, as, as actually I lied, it's two thirds of an ultimate every one second. So it just does give us a little bit more uptime on our uh, ultimate, which is our Atronach. That is a little bit helpful there, but um, I believe I only got one additional Atronac off uh, compared to like not using Heroic Slash. So not that much of a difference in a 6 million dummy test. In a longer fight, obviously it'll be uh, more noticeable, um, but that is a, a, the advantage of using Heroic Slash. You manage to get more ultimates up that way. Um, so for those who, for kind of reference, again, I didn't do one with dual wheels, um, but you can take a look at my build video for Stam Sork. The Stam Sork video, I was pulling around 42k, so we're looking at about a 3k drop in DPS overall. Um, so while it is viable to do a sword and board DPS, I was actually very surprised at this. I was not expecting to pull 39k. Um, do notice though that we are essentially being carried a little bit by Arms of Reliquin. If we didn't have Reliquin here, our DPS loss would be fairly substantial. So if we were using something like Hunting's Rage instead, um, our DPS would obviously suffer by, by quite a bit. We'd be losing a fair amount of DPS this way. Um, Reliquin is pulling 6K, almost 6k DPS by itself for us. So we'd be seeing a pretty substantial loss. That being said though, if we were to do also use Hunting on a dual wield build, we would also see a pretty similar loss in DPS as well. Um, so that's uh, that's something that I do kind of want to take a look into, but overall I'm not terribly interested in kind of exploring Sword and Board as a DPS option for endgame PvEs. However, that being said, 39k, this is without Major Fracture too, so with Major Fracture, again, add in about maybe 10% or so, uh, we'd be sitting at around 43k or so uh, with Major Fracture. So, um, not terribly great when it comes to DPS if you want to compare it to other stamina DPS, um, but that doesn't mean it's not possible to clear content with a sword and board DPS. Um, I would not recommend doing it. Um, this is definitely something that would be frowned upon in many raid groups. Um, but if you have a raid lead that's willing to let you experiment with a sword and board build, by all means you can definitely try it out. Um, it's not necessarily bad per se, it's obviously not optimal, um, but it's definitely viable to do. Now in terms of rotation, basically what you're doing is instead of using shrouded daggers or running slashes, you're just doing heroic slash instead. Uh, so, just kind of show you guys what I'm talking about with the kind of your uh, rotation. Back rotation pretty much stays exactly the same here. And this is mostly for Stam Sword, so you're basically just throw slashing this whole time. You're just, this is your spam. You don't have to worry about any sort of rending slashes stuff or anything like that. You just throw slash the whole time. And that's pretty much the entire rotation. Now, if you are going to use a class that has a class bamble, uh, for example the Nightblade, uh, you're basically going to be doing Heroic Slash uh, for the minor, minor heroism, so you'll basically be doing it about every 10 seconds or so. You really won't be using Heroic Slash as a spam mode because your class bamble is going to be stronger. So on a Stamina Nightblade, your rotation is going to be exactly the same, just instead of running slashes every 10 seconds, you have Heroic Slash every 10 seconds instead. Um, so that's the main difference there. So really, I would say if you're going to do Swordboard DPS, your best bet's probably going to be on a Stam Sork. If you really want to kind of, you know, be a Sword and Board DPS, uh, quote unquote, using a Sword and Board active ability. Um, otherwise, if you're doing something like on a Nightblade or a Warden, they have class spambles, so it doesn't really feel like a Sword and Board DPS. You're just basically replacing Rending Clash with Heroic Slash instead. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys found this informative. I certainly found it uh, kind of surprising that Sword and Board DPS can actually be this high. Um, of course, we are 
kind of getting carried a little bit by Reliquin here, but it's still possible to clear, I would say, 95%, 99% of the content in the game. You obviously can't, I wouldn't recommend doing this for like VMAW hard mode or VHOF hard mode or anything like that, uh, but for normal VMAW or maybe even normal halls of fabrication VHOF, it might be viable. I personally would not recommend doing it. I'd probably say just stick with dual wield or even two hand over sword and board, but this is an option for those of you guys out there who kind of want to do something off meta, have a little bit of fun uh, while still being able to complete vet content. So that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this build, whether you want like an actual in-depth build video on this, um, and I will uh, make it if you guys ask for it. Uh, so hopefully you guys found this video informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.